let us see about placenta previa. The placenta previa is nothing but when the placenta is situated very near or covering the internal loss of the cervix either completely or partially. This is placenta previa and this is one of the very important causes of antipartum hemorrhage. Antipartum hemorrhage is when bleeding occurs from 24 weeks of pregnancy till the birth of the baby. First let us see the types of placenta previa. There are four major types. First is total placenta previa. Here the internal loss is completely covered by the placenta. Next is partial placenta previa. As the name suggests the internal loss is partially covered by the placenta. Next third is marginal placenta previa. Here the placenta is at one of the margins of the internal loss. Next the fourth is low lying placenta. Here the placenta is situated near the internal loss but not actually on the internal loss. This is low lying placenta which is approximately within 2 centimeters from the internal loss. Next coming to the etiology, the most important factors are increasing maternal age, multiple pregnancy, previous LSCS, lower segment cesarean section. This produces scarred uterus which serves as a site for the placenta adhesion. Next smoking, all these are the risk factors for the development of placenta previa. Coming to the clinical features, the symptoms include bleeding PV, it is bleeding per vaginum but it is painless condition. There is painless bleeding per vaginum and the bleeding can be recurrent and causeless without any cause. Bleeding per vaginum which is painless can be recurrent and it is causeless, it is not related to any activity. Next the signs of placenta previa, there can be tachycardia or hypotension. Next the patient can be anemic because of blood loss and per abdomen the abdominal findings include the uterus is relaxed. This is a very important point to differentiate placenta previa from abruptio placenta. The uterus is relaxed here and there can be abnormal presentation of the fetus. And the fetal parts are easily palpable. And fetal heart rate is usually present. This is the per abdomen findings in case of placenta previa. And one very important thing to note 
is vaginal examination is absolutely contraindicated should never be performed this is a very important point to be known in case of placenta previa vaginal examination should never be done so some of the important points here in clinical features are there is painless bleeding per vaginum which can be recurrent and it is causeless and in signs the important signs are the uterus per abdomen is relaxed so these are the points which differentiate placenta previa from abruptio placenta we'll see about abruptio placenta in our next video next differential diagnosis differential diagnosis for placenta previa is abruptio placenta so we'll see about abruptio placenta in our next video next the diagnosis of placenta previa is made by trans vaginal ultrasound which is more sensitive next coming to the very important thing that is the management of placenta previa the management can be divided into two general management and specific management the general management includes admission of patient starting two white bore iv lines next taking blood sample for hemoglobin blood grouping typing cross matching and other investigations next check the vitals check if there is bleeding pv so if there is bleeding the color of the blood is noted usually red bright red in case of placenta previa next we catheterize the patient for bladder emptying we do abdominal palpation fetal heart rate monitoring then as we have already discussed per vaginum examination should not be performed next usg can be done for placental localization next the input and output should be monitored these are all the general management next coming to the specific management this depends on the gestation and the degree of placenta previa so there are two lines of management in case of specific management one is expectant line of management which is called as mccafe johnson's regime so this includes improving the perinatal outcome by making the pregnancy continue till term without any complications to the mother and the fetus so this can be done in cases of major degrees of placenta previa if there is no bleeding 
So here the patient should be stable hemodynamically. The bleeding should stop early. The patient is asked to rest. Complete blood rest is given. Next anemia is corrected. And routine antenatal care is continued till 37 weeks. And then at 37 weeks that is when, when it attains term, then the pregnancy is terminated usually by C-section. So, this is the expectant line of management that is McAfee Johnson's regime. Another one is active line of management. The active line of management is followed when one of the following conditions exist. When gestational age is more than 37 weeks that is at term or if the fetus is dead or any malformation in the fetus at any point of time and there is very much increased bleeding and the patient has features of shock like hypertension and tachycardia and the patient is in labor. These are the indications for active line of management. So lastly, coming to the mode of delivery. In cases of marginal placenta previa, when the patient is hemodynamically stable and when the pregnancy is at term, a normal vaginal delivery can be allowed, whereas in other types of placenta previa, like partial complete placenta previas, and in case of posterior placenta previa, LSCS is indicated. Low segment cesarean section is indicated. So, these are all the important points about placenta previa. We will see about abruptio placenta in our next video and the differences between placenta previa and the abruptio placenta, which will also be seen in the next video. Thank you.